Welcome back to the fish room. So um, I need to put another tank in. Uh, I've got a funny sort of shaped hexagon tank that I want to pop in here for uh, Phoenix, uh, the little snake head. And basically this end, uh, the tanks are all raised up using breeze blocks and planks of wood. Um, but what I'm going to do is um, stack it higher on each side of this Roma tank here. Um, and then I've got a piece of worktop to go over the top. So we're going to prepare to install this um, sort of, I think it's about four and a half foot, four or five foot tank. Alrighty then, so um, <laughs> a bit of, uh, it kind of looks like a fireplace to me. Why does it look like a fireplace? It's because of all the bricks. Um, so yeah, I've managed to get it level. Um, it was like a good inch out, uh, which is why it looked so um, skew if when I popped that worked up on just then. Um, but no, it is, it is now level, uh, or as level as I can get it. So yeah, uh, I mean it's not level, but it's, it's more level than it was. <laughs> So, um, yeah, there's a difference between level and flat. So if something's not flat and the bottom is twisted, that's bad for tanks because it puts pressure points on the glass. Um, if something's like, you know, you could have a tank literally sat at a, a 45 degree angle like that and the water would tip out of the um, top of the tank before the glass would blow out. Um, so yeah, it doesn't have to be completely flat, but I mean, if it's, if it's really like that, you're gonna be able to tell because the water line isn't gonna be as straight across the top of the tank. Um, which can get quite annoying after a while if you're just constantly staring at it um, and just noticing that one side is a little bit lower than the other. Um, but it doesn't actually affect the structural uh, integrity of the tank. So yeah, we've, uh, we've made a little fireplace. What I want to do now is see if I can create something here. Um, and then I need to grab, grab myself some masonry paint and uh, give all of this a lick of black paint and then uh, it will all look a little bit uh, better. See, I have left space on this side to do the same here. Um, that's my dad's uh, pitcher plant that I'm trying to keep alive in here, so ignore that. That's just a cracked aquarium, um, and that stays in there because it's, it's humid, and um, it's a very difficult plant, and I don't know how I'm keeping it alive, but anyway. Um, so yeah, this whole lot needs a paint, and then yeah, I've left some space there. There is actually exactly one breeze block of room just there for me to basically build up this bit and, and go across again. Um, but this is just a bit of worktop that I've got for now and then yeah there's there's brackets underneath so we're going to be uh, attaching it to the wall uh, before the aquarium goes in and yeah um, once the aquarium's on this obviously all the weight distribution is going to go straight down and um, it's, it's going to be a lot stronger than those piddly little bits of chipboard that a lot of the fish tanks come on so yeah one fish tank prayer place <laughs> and I've, I've left myself enough room up top here as well so I can get my arm in um, on some of these tanks I haven't, like on this rack here, I really do not have enough space to get my arm in and catching fish out of this tank is really, really tricky. Um, but no, I've, even though it looks quite tall, uh, I've got enough space here so I can get in because um, obviously there's discus and lots of bits of wood and uh, my medusa placos and things in here. And if I ever needed to catch those ember tetras out, um, I'd be chasing them around for ages because there's a centre base brace on this tank so you've got to like take the net out and pop it in the other side each time so yeah made, made life a little bit easier for myself by giving myself enough space uh, up top and then yeah I'm gonna have a little bit of a salvage and see what I can do in this corner now because um, I feel like if I can have my sterilizing buckets underneath and maybe like a bin and then um, see if I can create some sort of cabinet desk water testing station dealio over in this corner that might be quite good because um, this is literally just an unused corner of the fish room right now so yeah, let me let me go have a rummage and see what I can find. Cool, right, so I've made a little temporary corner just to hold up all of my um, packing stuff over here. Um, you can always make an area look a lot more glamorous by shoving a, a potted plant in front of it. Um, but this is all just my packing stuff. Um, so I've just uh, used these sort of like funny little, they're almost like polystyrene tiles but with like sand stuck on the fronts of them. And I've had them for ages, they're just lying around. So I've just um, wedged them in the corner there and um, that'll do for now. Um, so yeah, this is just all my packing stuff, measurers, tubs, cutters, heat packs, packing peanuts, elastic bands, all the things you need um, to send the fish to their new homes. Um, and yeah, so that, that will just work temporarily. Um, just got my buckets and the radiator and stuff underneath. So 
so I've just been sucking all these bristlenose fry back out of my buckets. I have now worked out they are 100% short thin gold bristle noses because they've come out of the tank that the uh, adults were in because there's a bunch of them swimming around in there today. So I've actually got these in two tanks, which means when I've been going around doing my water changes this morning, the odd one or two have been sucked up and there's yeah, a little pile of little baby bristle noses here. They're growing really well actually. They're growing a good couple of millimeters a day at the moment. It's actually like obvious that they're growing. Um, and you can't really see from this angle, but they have all started developing their little bristle nose spots already, which is really cute. Here we go. So here's one of them. You can see it's just basically like a little bristle nose that's been shrunk, but you can just make out the, the faint golden pattern that's uh, starting to develop on them now. And the little um, tail stripes and stripes with the fins. So yeah, they're doing really well, bless them, now that I've got them all corralled back into their tank. And change of plan, I've decided to put these little tanks up on top of the work top, so I've still got a little bit of space. And then I think what I'm going to do is put the discus hexagon tank here, on the floor, which gives me more space to put even more tanks on top. Right then, cool. Uh, progress is happening. So, the little shrimp uh, ecosystem tank has been moved. Um, and I've just filled it up with 50% old water and 50% new water. Um, both of the filters are in that tank um, with air going through them at the moment to keep them cycled. And then, yeah, I'm just filling up this uh, 60 litre cube uh, with some fresh water. I've rinsed it all out because the substrate was a bit um, in the bottom. And uh, yeah, little Phoenix is just temporarily um, in this tank here uh, with some larger placos that won't fit in his mouth just for a minute. Um, and he's not particularly pleased with me for putting him in this bright blue tank. Um, but he'll be alright for a minute. So this tank actually has polystyrene and plywood attached to the bottom of it. Um, so it's pretty sturdy as it is, but I did just raise it up off the floor and uh, pop a couple of planks along there. Um, just so that I can actually drain it out all the way uh, if I need to. It needs to be raised up so I can drain it all the way down. Alrighty then, so I'm just going to leave this tank to warm up for a little while because uh, I've filled it up with cold water and uh, yep, it's pretty cold. Um, and I'm just sort of like leak testing it as well because it has been outside for a little while. And then yeah, I need to pop a mop around because I've been trucking mud in and out, sorting all of this out. But all the tanks are looking really good, I've just got some food in for everybody. And um, our new arrivals are starting to look a little bit more settled now. Leopard frogs, doing really good, bless them. Um, I've even been seeing the snowballs and the Colombians uh, in this tank, although they've all vanished now. And uh, yeah, stuff like the uh, L15s coming out for food now, doing really good. So uh, yeah, just gonna leave these tanks to warm up a little bit and then I better think about escape. So the king tigers are settling in really well now, um, they're a lot less shy and they seem to have established their territories. So the main differences between the king tigers and the L333s is the king tigers have a lot more stripes, um, like a lot. They're both a, a real fish, if that makes sense, they're, they're not hybrids, they are um, both fish that um, you can find in the wild and uh, these are wild king tigers. Um, but they just haven't got a species name yet so they're just called Hypancistrus sp. Um, a little bit like the um, the L201 snowballs and um, the L333s are also just high plan sisters. Um, but no, the king tigers, they've got brown eyes, they've got very lots and lots and lots of stripes. They're very, very stripy, especially on the tail. Um, L333s normally have sort of like five, six tops stripes, um, quite thick stripes along the tail, and then king tigers have lots. Um, I also find king tigers have a more elongated body. Um, they're quite a sort of streamlined looking fish. 
um, and especially in the tail, um, the mature males can get a really quite nice long forked uh, tail on them. So they've just got a little bit of a different look to them. And this, um, I would probably guess that this is a male king tiger. Now the spikes aren't always the most accurate way to tell. Um, having a, a good look at the vent, um, the overall shape of the fish, the shape of the head, all of that kind of thing with Hope and Sisters. Um, but they are doing really well. This one's got a lovely clean pattern on it. Um, lots of black, lots of white. And almost, um, yeah, you can see how many stripes they have through their fins and this sort of more elongated shape. I'd probably agree that, that that's a male because it's more triangular shaped, whereas the females are often a more spoon shaped and they've got sort of quite a pointy nose as well. It's sort of like tch -tch -tch, um, whereas the males have um, sort of wider cheeks. Um, so yeah, they're, they're doing really well up here. They, they seem to be getting on all right with the, uh, the bristle noses and stuff. And then this here, we've got my L397 male. And I can tell it's a male. All of the members of the Pinacula species, um, the males are so incredibly spiky. Um, it normally just starts off just sort of on the base of their tail. Um, and then as they mature, they can almost look like they've got hair all over them. Um, super, super fuzzy. So if it's a Pinacula species, a little bit different to the Hypancistrus, because um, Hypancistrus, the females can be quite prickly too. Um, with these, you're really looking at the spikes. And yeah, the females are quite smooth. Um, there is one here, and you can see, you can just see the outlines ends of the scales um, instead of uh, lots of odd on toads all the way down the sides of the body. Um, so yeah, I mean she looks very plump, but the barometric pressure is still up in the thousands. Um, so from the reading I did last night, I've downloaded a little widget to go on my phone screen, so um, top tip. Uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm seeing how the barometric pressure affects the fish, so at the moment it's up in the thousands, but it is due to drop, so we will see if doing water changes um, coinciding with drops in barometric pressure will uh, get these going, or whether they're just not ready yet and it's just not breeding season for them. Um, but no, unfortunately, we are eggless still. Maybe around Easter we'll get eggs, that would be lovely. <laughs> Alright then, I've just come back from town. Unfortunately, I've managed to find any sand today because um, I don't really like uh, paying £20 for a bag of sand, so I uh, go and get small play sand. Um, but unfortunately, I wasn't able to find any today. Everyone was like, oh, it's seasonal. I know for a fact where I can find some tomorrow, so I will pop out and get some, and if that doesn't work, I'll just order some. So the water isn't warm enough anyway, so I can't uh, do anything with this tank until tomorrow. Um, so I've just popped the mop around and just given everyone a once over, everybody's looking alright. Um, but no, the idea I have for this tank is obviously we're going to be popping the discus in it, so it will be like a black water sort of biotope, very natural sort of Amazonian-esque. But I would like a waterfall in it or something um, to sort of make use of this space here. So like having it sort of going up the wall or something a little bit, um, as much as I can without flooding the place. But I have this... This is, uh, I have this, which is a big polystyrene rock thing. Um, so I have had this in water before, it's all like cured and things. Um, but the idea is that you're supposed to like silicon this to the aquarium somehow. Now I don't like siliconing things if I can help it, I like uh, more temporary uh, things. But as far as you are concerned, that looks like a rock. Um, so I feel like because of the shape of it, in fact, if you look at it there, look, I feel like I may be able to lodge this up somehow in this corner of this tank here. Plants sort of coming out of it and then um, maybe pop a hole through it and have a hose so that the waterfall comes out of there. And then I was thinking to use the rocks out of the pond, which are these big, big rocks about sort of, you know, half the size of my head. Um, and they're not really doing anything except um, Patrick the Placo lives in there and Terry, um, who are two very large uh, common Placos. One's a chocolate Placo, one's just a, a normal one. So I was thinking of pulling these rocks out of here and using those to stack them up to where that polystyrene one is up in the top of the tank. Um, and then I've also got some matching bits of slate, so it'll all be the right sort of colour. Um, so yeah, th this bit here is a piece of slate. 
and then this, this is almost like um, larger chunks of slate. And I've got all of these just from the landscaping section in the garden centre. Um, they're for like edges of flower beds and things like that, um, driveways, um, that, that shebang. So they're not normally too expensive. Obviously they have gone up in recent uh, current situation. Um, things are getting a little bit more expensive. Um, but compared to how much you would pay in uh, an aquatic shop, things are a lot cheaper. Um, and yes, yeah, so as long as you don't do any uh, sandstone or limestone, totally safe. The slate's totally safe. Plum slate, it's all good. There we go, the big. So I've popped uh, my fake rock in the top and uh, just pulled some of that pampas grass uh, around it um, just to blend it in a little bit. But I think that looks, um, that looks all right. So the idea would be to stack those rocks up to underneath where this polystyrene bit is, pop a hole through it so that there's water maybe trickling down this seam here. And you know, I could potentially drop the, the water level a little bit as well. Um, I just want it to be easy to move around and change if I want to. So the scape down at the bottom will be quite simple. It'll just be like sand and branches, which is really what discus like. Um, and then yeah, we'll just have this sort of waterfall. Now this isn't actually taking up that much of the width of the tank either. Um, so that waterfall feature is hopefully not gonna take up too much room, but I do tend to design these things in such a way so that the fish can like get in them and um, get behind them. But we maybe will develop that so that the, the waterfall is the filter. Um, but in my experience, it's always difficult to clean them. And you've got to like take the whole thing apart um, to clean it with the pump down in the bottom. So I tend to do them where the pump is easily accessible. Um, so I can just lift it out and give it a clean and then the waterfall works again. Um, so it might be sponge filtered. I might see if I can have a play with the, the waterfall. Maybe like a Hamburg mountain filter running off the waterfall or something. Um, I am not sure. So yeah. We're going to wait for this to warm up, um, but I'm pretty pleased with how this is looking at the moment, to be fair. It's, it's not a bad start. It's, as far as I, I think it's an old jewel tank. Does it say jewel? Oh no, it's arena tank. Cool. But it is, uh, it's kind of retro. Um, what entertains me is how the glass has actually been cut uh, into diagonals at the back here uh, to allow for the pipes, which I can't say I've seen that on a tank in a while. Um, and the sort of double brace dealio going on in the top there is interesting. So um, yeah, it's definitely got some personality. It's not just a straight rectangle. It is a, it's a hexagon, it's just a big one. And then yeah, so um, we've got our three tanks here. Um, so I've decided we're gonna pop Phoenix in this middle tank down in the bottom here. We're gonna take everybody out of here. They're gonna go in the, um, in the hexagon tank behind me. Um, all of the ember tetras I would like to put somewhere else. I don't want them with the discus anymore because I have started to notice their numbers are starting to dwindle. There's still quite a few in there, but when I've done a head count the last couple of days, there are a few missing. Um, so I'm getting suspicious of these discus, or potentially actually even the little butterfly cichlids. Um, probably just a little bit too much for the little ember tetras. So we're going to put the ember tetras somewhere different. All of this is also going to get a lick of paint eventually, um, once I get around to it. And all of the big fish at this tank, we are going to move over into this one here. So yeah, I'm not sure what I'm going to do with these three little cube tanks. Obviously I've got the shrimp tank there. Um, it'll be more worth my time getting different shrimp um, and breeding them out in one of these tanks um, if I really wanted to do shrimp. But to be fair, they're just kind of muddling away. You're probably not going to be able to see because there's no light on here. But this tank is just full of life. There are shrimp babies upon shrimp babies. There's little like copepods and amphipods and whatever you call them. Seed shrimp. There's that funny little coral thing I showed you. Um, but no, there are a couple of individuals in there that I could potentially pick out. There's a couple of blue ones in there. Um, but maybe if I get lucky, I've got a male and a female. I could breed some blue ones out in a different tank. Um, but I'm not too fussed at the moment. So yeah, um, if you had these um, two little tanks, what would you do with them? What would you put in them? Um, give me some ideas, guys. Because uh, I wasn't really planning on having these up here. I was just really focusing on the hexagon tank. Um, and yeah, now I've got these two extra little cube tanks free. So um, it's, it's always exciting just having an empty tank. I quite like an empty tank before anything goes in it because there's so many different possibilities. It's like a blank piece of paper. And this tank's doing really well. These guys actually are getting on really, really well uh, as far as Central American cichlids go. This Muscahera Sargentaeus is uh, colouring up now. He looks really happy in here, to be honest. He's really sort of coming into his own. And uh, yeah, the uh, Asian sun crab has been out and about quite a lot today. 
it's in it. This tank's really good. It's doable to change. So we'll get that done in the next couple of days. Definitely doable to change now. Um, but no, everybody's looking nice and settled. Everyone seems to get on really good. So, but yeah, that mask of hers is looking pretty cool now. He's really getting that sort of uh, black mask across the face, which is where they get their name from. Alrighty then, so I'm going to leave it here for today. I've got loads done, switching all these tanks around, um, making myself a desk area, and um, yeah, I've got four tanks to play with now. I've got the hexagon, uh, the shrimp tank, and the two little empty ones as well. So um, yeah, let me know what you would do with them. Um, but certainly the hexagon tank I can crack on with tomorrow. So I'll go grab some sand, and then we'll, um, we'll hardscape that tomorrow. Um, and then I reckon at some point I'm going to have to clean the glass on this tank goodness me um at some point i'm gonna have to go and get more discus because this guy is um just not getting on with the other one um so i don't know whether i'm gonna have one on its own or to be honest i probably just need to go and get like four more um so yeah these two have been living together just fine for ages but i mean they're a little bit like oscars um oscars can do that you can have them together for like 12 18 months and then they'll hit almost like um maturity and then they'll just fall out because you know looking at them they're probably two males i don't know i thought this one was a female um and i thought the other one was the male actually even though i tend to call them by this one's the male and the other one's the female actually oh i don't know now but yeah they're not getting on this one's just dominating the front of the tank so we'll um we'll see what happens once we move them over into the other one um but i am going to be doing a little bit of a road trip next week and going to see some pretty big UK fish shops because um, I'm delivering some fish up in that direction and I think that that will um, give me a good opportunity to make up, maybe pick up some nice hardscape bits um, to improve the tanks and we can also um, have a look at some discs as well we're up there and see if we can add to the collection but no we'll, um, we'll give that tank escape tomorrow uh, so stay tuned for another video thank you so much for watching and um, yeah I'll see you in the next one bye bye